mini episode 1481 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge mini episode 1481, our Better Call Saul episode 6.7 preview. I'm FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our top five notes of interest about the final episode of the first half of the final season. Number five, Lalo's got enough information to come after Gus, and the irony is that Gus, Mike, Victor, and everyone else involved might almost be relieved. Lalo's trip to Germany ended with an apparent axe murder, but it no doubt yielded info about Gus's secret project. Now, Lalo probably doesn't have enough info to know about the super lab that's going to go in that big hole in the ground, but he'll know that Gus is up to something that's not good for the Salamancas. But waiting for him has been agonizing for his enemies. At this point, they just seem to want this confrontation over with one way or another. Number four. It seems way too obvious that Saul is going to buy Dr. Caldera's little black book. He's got the money, and he definitely understands the utility to having the keys to Albuquerque's criminal underground, especially since he's already representing so many members of it. Number three, we get a look at Howard's sad home existence right before his life either gets a whole lot worse or ends altogether. His cold fish of a wife may not even care if something really bad happens, which just adds to the pathos of what's coming his way. Howard Hamlin really seemed to be on top of the world until his unwitting role in Chuck's death. And now, his departure from the show, which is inevitable, will just seem like the logical culmination of the downfall that Saul engineered. Number two, a snag in the Sandpiper plot. Francesca's call got Saul the information needed to complete the scheme, but his trip for a celebratory bottle of liquor provided the information that the doppelganger judge would not be convincing in those pictures. That led to what might be the final, pivotal decision of Kim's life. Number one, Kim's U-turn back from the way to Santa Fe has to massively tie into her dark destiny. On her way to realize the dream of a fully funded public defender structure, one that wouldn't even necessitate the Sandpiper scheme, Kim heads back to make sure that Saul can execute their D-Day plot. This feels like it will be the ultimate, as well as literal, road not taken in Kim's life, because of what will surely unfold when they ambush Howard. The cold open gave more insight about how Kim responds to bad influences in her life, and it's clear that her attraction to Saul has to do with her warped family life. It's tough for all of the fans who have grown to love Kim over six seasons to realize just how much she's sealing her fate by going all in on this revenge plot. A sad end awaits not just her target, Howard, but her as well. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.